Niger is one of the world's poorest countries. Two thirds of it lie in the Sahara Desert, and yet over 100,000 migrants pass through it annually on their way to points north. The transit has grown even more difficult now, but that has less to do with the recent military putsch and more to do with laws enacted some time ago. Migrants are suffering, but Niger is too. One small aid organization, Alarm Phone Sahara, is doing what it can to help. Here in the village of Asamaka, close to the Algerian border, its workers hand out water and provisions to migrants who have been sent back by Algeria. Over 400 kilometers from the first town on the Algerian side, at point zero, the border marker, the tarmac, stops. Algeria has expelled thousands of sub-Saharan Africans. Traoré is a Guinean migrant who tried to find work in a Maghreb state. The, the Algerian. It was the Algerian gendarmes. We were in the lorry, and they made us get off it in the desert. Some of us ran. They stopped the lorry. They caught everyone. They tortured some of us. They demanded our phones, watches, headphones, clothes, power banks, shoes everything of any value. If anyone refused, he was beaten. They hit me so hard in the desert, so much, I suffered a lot. The economy of this central Saharan region, as vast as Western Europe, is driven by cash in hand jobs, and the driving force for those is migration. The expellees have to walk the 15 kilometers to Asamaka. Some die on the way. Some walk until their feet are burning hot. It's not easy, not easy. It's very difficult. If you don't know the road, you're dead. Women's conditions are also extreme. Some of them sell themselves to find food. Others don't speak. They have been raped in Asamaka. With its motor trikes, the Alarm Phone Sahara NGO scours this desert for migrants in need of help who can no longer walk or find their way. Sometimes it finds them sitting on the ground, waiting in despair. Others have been robbed by highwaymen. They took our documents, they took our passports, money, everything and shredded them. When you arrive here, you don't have your family to call. It's hell. You can't drink hot water, only cold water. This is my refrigerator. Even when I sleep, I keep it with me. There's no food, no work, nothing. The sun is too strong. All we can do is wait here, we sleep here. Please help us. Agades, the capital of the northern Agades region, is where the migrants end up. Here in the Alarm Phone Sahara headquarters, director Dr. Azizu Shehu coordinates the missions in the field. From January to the end of April 2023, our checkpoints counted around 15,000 people. If the trend continues, we risk doubling or even tripling the number recorded in 2022. It's really alarming. Traditional 
Traditionally, the city was a way station on the migrants' route from Africa to Europe. Today, it's become a dead end for many migrants rejected by northern countries. A few kilometres from Agadez, the UN Refugee Agency has set up a camp to house refugees like Adama and Sefadin and promote integration. The two were planning to reach Europe, but their path led through Libya and then across the Mediterranean Sea. But when they came to Libya, their dream ended. In 2015, I left Sudan for Libya because of the conflict and because living conditions were extremely hard. Once there, I suffered torture and inhumane treatment. Soon enough, I realized there would be no future nor work for me there, no chance for me to enter Italy or Europe. It turned out badly for me. When I met my friend Sefadin in Libya, we were unrecognizable, so we decided to return to Niger and set up some business here. They arrived in this camp in 2020 and have been waiting ever since, like thousands of other migrants, to make something of their lives. Finding something to do here is really tough. Nobody will hire you if you're just sitting and waiting. You have to create your own business. Our families in Sudan wait for news and some help. They chose to collaborate and pool their savings to buy first a motorbike and then a rickshaw and then another one. It quickly became their main job as many refugees need transport into town and back. Rickshaws are the perfect means of transportation for the narrow, dusty roads of Agardes. Starting out wasn't easy. We had to learn the Nigerian language to integrate into the city of Agadez better. When we pick up fares in town, we manage to communicate, discuss the price and respond to their needs. Today we're really at ease. We finally have a job. We felt welcomed by Nigerians and we had the opportunity to integrate. Integration is one of the biggest problems for migrants stuck in Agadez. The economy has taken a sharp downturn since 2015, when a law which the European Union informally encouraged was passed to criminalise transporting migrants. At the town's bus station, everything has slowed down. Adamu Idi has been a hauler for some 15 years. He recalls a vibrant past when would-be migrants rushed aboard trucks bound for Libya and Europe. The station used to be packed with passengers, traders and shopkeepers. It was filled with people, like a big market. Now when you enter the station, you see everything has changed. There used to be many vehicles loading up here and leaving to Durku, a lot of them. But now these trips have decreased. Now only small vehicles depart from time to time. Agadez was buzzing with life, buzzing with vitality. Everybody was involved in the migration economy. Homeowners, vehicle owners, drivers, smugglers, motorbike taxi drivers, merchants, restaurant owners, credit card sellers, etc., etc. All these people worked in that sector. It was almost impossible to find someone unemployed. The rise in deportations, the criminalization of migration and the discovery of gold in the region have disrupted the local economy, affecting the security of the region. That evening, Arlet's main radio station organised a debate on the subject. A representative of civil society, invited by Rahama Radio, expressed his alarm at the deteriorating situation. 
These days, there are so many guns in the bush. Everyone's trying to get a gun. Even here in town, there are guns. You can't even imagine. Everyone. I'd rather the government knew who owns a weapon. Not everyone should have one. We've noticed that they haven't had a good check. Even in the desert, we should know more about it. You're going to see people with guns in their belts. Are we preparing for a war or what? Despite the increasingly complicated situation in this part of northern Niger, more and more young people from Saharan countries, from Sudan to Mauritania, are heading for the desert in search of another migrant dream. Routes change and travel is becoming more dangerous. Are we able to tell African birds not to come to Europe? Are European birds not to come to Africa? There may be victims, no doubt, there will be. But migration, whether we like it or not, will go on. Knowing that the situation in some areas is unbearable and inhumane, how can we tell these people to stay where they are? It's like setting fire to a house when the residents are inside and alive and telling them to stay inside. They're going to burn to death. It's not possible. It's a survival instinct. It's a human instinct, migration. Nothing will stop it. Thank you.